What is up, y'all? Welcome back to day two of our Adobe live stream for the week. I hope that you are doing well. My name is Idara Ekpo, and today, again, we are joined by Koki Yamaguchi as he visits, um, joins us excuse me, to edit cityscapes, landscapes, and portraits in both Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. So, Yoki, or, I'm so sorry. Am I... I'm all over the place this morning. <laughs> Koki, how are you it's doing right. this morning? <laughs> oh, well, here in Tokyo, Japan, it's rather midnight than morning. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but and yeah, you. took a power nap and I'm ready to go. So I'm super excited to share my portrait editing process more so on the color grading side. But yeah, mm -hmm. super excited really really excited and i am here in phoenix arizona where it is 9 30 and i started my day about an hour ago so <laughs> i think my body is waking up while you are trying to go to sleep so <laughs> the opposite the opposite um but i hope that y'all are doing well whether you are joining us on youtube or behance go ahead and just say what's up in the chat we would love to see y'all and just let us know where you are joining in from um and before we get started i want to remind y'all to make sure that you do not miss out on adobe express streams right before this stream you want to make sure that you tune in and learn how to implement the easy to use app into your workflow with claudi from print my soul so koki yesterday we had a great time looking at cityscapes and landscapes and what, and all of that great stuff. And today I think we're kind of transitioning into more so portraits. So um, feel free to just kind of reintroduce yourself to the group because I'm sure there's new people that weren't here yesterday. Um, and we would love to hear more about who you are, the work you do and what you have planned for us. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, yesterday we jumped into editing cityscapes and landscapes, which is one of the few styles of photography that I really love and enjoy shooting but today we're going to dive into some portraits but my name is Koki and um, I'm a Tokyo based content creator and I do shoot a lot of different kind of styles of photography so landscape cityscapes portraits architecture and even lifestyle travel stuff and yeah I just kind of cover a lot of grounds because I find a lot of those styles of photography really enjoyable and mm -hmm. Yeah, just inspiring to do uh, all of them because you learn a lot from each individual style. So yeah, this is my website. I don't have everything here. Uh, if there's, if I put everything, it's just going to be too cluttered. So I usually just have one of a few of my favorite um, photos lined up. So as you can see, this is from a Japan collection, and there's a lot of. Um, Japanese oh. vibe um, going on here that a lot of wow. uh, people really enjoy because I think Tokyo and Japan in general is one of the most uh, kind of a bucket list for everyone. So yeah, it's on my yeah. bucket list for sure. <laughs> yeah, there's, I don't think people are like a week or two is fine. Right. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> that's not enough to. How long, how long, you. how long should like, so if I was planning to come out, how long should I go out for? I think just Tokyo alone, you can spend a week and not wow. be satisfied, I think, depending on the season, of course. But yeah, we have like, like yeah, it's like, oh, that's, wow. it's just massive. Um, oh, <laughs> but yeah, one day, do, one day. <laughs> yeah, well, well, soon. If the borders <laughs> open up, right? I get yes. that asked a lot. <laughs> My DMs is like full of, when is it going to open? I'm not the government, you know, like. You know, <laughs> we can't answer to... that for you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is my portraits. I have two pages worth of portraits, but just like a day, like a sunset, uh, kind of uh, soft light during the day photos, but as well as like neons where it's like more technical in terms of trying to get the lighting. And yeah, I really enjoy shooting portraits. Um, so I'm super excited for editing today's photos. These, um, this is my Instagram page, so you can kind of check it out. I usually post a lot of photos, try and keep up to date, um, and share some reels as well, which is also like I incorporate photos. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, if you guys are interested, please check my Instagram out. Yes, make sure and shout out to Sam for always being on top of dropping the website and Instagrams in the chat. So, make sure y'all go ahead <laughs> and go to Koki's website so you can go and check out more of his work. 
Um, I know we talked about a little bit about prints. I think you said that you had two sets left of prints and then you also talked about presets. So go ahead and check all that out and then hit up his Instagram, give him a follow, show some love. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have planned for today? All right. So jumping in straight into Lightroom, we're going to, of course, edit some portraits and I do want to kind of start off by editing a like a sunset, like a light, mm -hmm. like during the day photo and try and show you guys my process mm -hmm. of skin retouching a little bit, not too in depth. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't really go too in depth with skin retouching just because the models or, and people that I work with, they do have like really nice skin. I don't need mm -hmm. to really mess with. So I'm, I think I'm just fortunate enough to be in that situation. I feel yeah. like, but, um, yeah, let's. I think we can just start let's, by let's do it should I'm we excited. just start by edit like doing the skin retouching or yeah let's like... let, let's start wherever you want to start if you are moving towards the screen retouching first let's start there and, i'm just and, afraid and... like we're gonna run out of time if i like i don't know okay I think you, um, you'll do you got it you got it okay so um one question that i usually get asked a lot is how do i select photos and it's just whatever you feel like like you like then mm -hmm. you just uh, send it off to the quick collection which is here so you just keep going like this it's really like if you stay on a single photo for too long mm -hmm. you just start overthinking things yeah <laughs> so you just go through like this and um yeah like oh okay you, you like if you like these two sets just put those two in the quick mm -hmm. collection and you can do that with like multiple photos but then um it'll show up all in here then you mm -hmm. kind of um can choose between like the few that you selected so yeah that's how i go about selecting a photo i like um, that you said that you don't spend too much time looking at a photo because i've definitely done that where you like you are going <laughs> through and you stare at a photo and you like it at first and then you find the one wrong thing and you're like ah not that one and, and your selection <laughs> process goes from being like you know just really just being should be like you know a couple minutes or 10 minutes or so to being like for me sometimes 30 minutes an hour so wow no it's like, bad really oh <laughs> especially well, I if like... i shoot larger projects i'm like analyzing each photo and i have to tell <laughs> myself like come on you dare pick something <laughs> yeah i mean a larger project yeah i, I, I can mm -hmm. totally feel that but um this was just actually this was like shot so quick we we're just oh there's like a flower let's oh, just shoot wow. it there and then it took maybe five minutes we shot there for five minutes and left and oh, it turned out pretty nice so yeah, they're beautiful. Um, yeah i think once you've selected a photo and to start editing i usually like to just head over to photoshop and just do a bit of skin retouching and then put it back into lightroom so that mm -hmm. anything you know i don't have to worry about editing the skin after um, yeah yeah so I think I'll quickly go over how I'll go about editing the skin. I hope it's low. Oh. It's not going to take forever to load. <laughs> and All if right. y'all have any questions for Koki throughout the live, whether you are on YouTube or Behance, make sure that you just go ahead and drop your questions in the chat so that way we can ask them throughout the live. Yeah, amazing. Um, I also do want to ask if you guys ever use any of my techniques or like tips, I guess, mm. from the previous live, you can tag me in uh, Instagram and then I'll check it out. Yep, yep. So, and if you yeah. missed that live, y'all know that you can catch the <laughs> recap. You can go back and watch the whole thing. That's so true. you can use those tips. So that's really dope there because we talked a lot about um, a lot of editing tips, the way you love blue. <laughs> it's very yeah. apparent. So make sure y'all go ahead and catch that recap so that way you can utilize those tips in your photos. Yep, okay. Um, we kind of want to first duplicate the photo uh, and then zoom right in. And then what I usually like to do is instead of using the healing brush or a spot uh, healing brush, all these, like you can, mm -hmm. I think you can get away with these. Like you can just yeah. go like that and you kind of get rid of that part, but not necessarily always, it's not as accurate as using the patch tool because what the patch tool essentially does is you get a section of the skin and it kind of like 
you can accurately sample it with a mm -hmm. specific area of the skin. So I know it's like tedious, but I usually like doing that. And um, yeah, I'll just like do this throughout the photo. I don't think I'm going to just, I'm going to skip like the whole entire thing because I just wanted to explain that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this is going to be more of a color grading tip. So I think we can just skip that part. But in general, that's what I do. We'll come back into um, Photoshop in the later on but for now i just wanted to quickly show you guys how i do the skin retouching um it's nothing crazy but it works it's effective <laughs> okay um once we have the photos saved and back into lightroom it should load okay all right so i think you just first, if you want to add a preset, you can, and then go from here and kind of work your way around it. But I'll just go without using a preset for this, just so that everyone can kind of understand that you don't always have to use a preset to get any good results. So, mm -hmm. um, bump up the exposure to see, um, how or what's going on. That's usually the one thing that I do for every photo mm -hmm. so we'll do that and then I think in terms of the highlight I'll turn it down a bit and then preserve some of those skin tones and then the shadows it's all personal preference but like the darker areas you can kind of see a bit more of it if you mm -hmm. prefer that way and then you can either like crush the blacks a bit and then the whites uh, leave it at zero and we'll just go straight down into the HLS and these two colors the greens and yellows are the two primary colors mm -hmm. that are apparent in the frame so we really want to take in count and like really focus on perfecting those colors so in terms of the green, I really love this hue of the green. Mm -hmm. It's not so much like th these kind of like saturated greens that yeah. sometimes occurs in some situations, but um, I do still want to heal a bit of the green and mute it. So in, in order to mute it, you go down with the luminance mm -hmm. and as well as the saturation. That's, you can even go further to really kill the greens but mm -hmm. we didn't want to leave a bit of that so that is what i would do for the greens mm -hmm. and then for the yellows i think it's too much so we mm -hmm. can turn down the saturation and maybe bring up the luminance of it and that already kind of fixes yeah. this distracting yellow of a color uh, saturation of the yellow yeah, so yeah 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 maybe a bit more of it yeah okay so one thing that um i realized with <laughs> portraits is that when you if you do prefer to add grain and you add grain you can kind of get away with not doing a perfect job of skin retouching mm, and yeah, that's that, that's a good point <laughs> yeah <laughs> but this only works okay this is a 55 millimeter uh 50 millimeter my bad uh lens so it's it's a bit of a classic portrait portrait lens mm -hmm. but if you shoot 35 or a bit you know far away the further you shoot you can get away with that you can get mm -hmm. away with like adding grains and not having to do much of skin retouching, skin retouching so. yep and we do have a question. Um, yeah. So this is from YouTube and they said, Hey Koki, yesterday you you told us about understanding light to those who are starting. What do you mean by that? Oh, okay. Um, thank you for watching yesterday's live, um, <laughs> by understanding light. So uh, as, as humans, we don't see what we see in front of us. We see light. Therefore we see the object. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And without light, we don't see the object. So that means that's how important light is.、Mm -hmm. So light can light can really kind of shape.、Um, so in terms of like portraits, say if a, if the lighting is coming from the left and it's a bit not top down or、uh, down up lighting, and it's softer, so it's diffused. So if you also have like a cloud, a thin cloud formation、mm -hmm. covering the sun even during the midday. It kind of diffuses the light, so it makes it softer.、Mm -hmm. So you don't get harsh, like super harsh. I wish I had a portrait where it's like super harsh, but it's <laughs> it looks so terrible. I don't want to show it, but、um, <laughs> it it will really. It's really hard to explain,、um, but you'll see how like light can really change、mm -hmm. how certain things or anything looks. I never actually try to explain what that. Like, no, I what I agree though. Like when you,、uh, like you said, like the way we see things is from light, and I think that understanding light or playing around with light will give you different perspectives too. So whether you like the diffused look, like you like if I go out and shoot here in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is hot and sunny, <laughs> and I don't want a harsh light look, and the sun is beating down everybody's face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably not gonna want to shoot during that time, or I'm gonna look for you know areas where I can kind, of, or I'll either bring like a diffuser if I can diffuse the light, or shoot in areas where there's shadow, where、um, there's like a large shadow, so I can have more even lighting.、Um, mm. If you want to play around with lighting, I like what you did here, where like you kind of placed it around the plants, and so you have like the the light that's coming in obviously, but then the shadow that's forming because of the plant that's there, and so you can play around with light with that way. Um, but I do think it's、mm, yeah. important to understand like what direction light is coming from and how it's hitting your subject because that's what it's gonna look like. You know,、yeah. you, you want to know like, okay, am I going for this look? If you're going for the harsh light look, then maybe you do want your subject to face hard, <laughs> direct well, sunlight. Good luck with that. <laughs> I know. But if you don't, if you want more of a diffused look, maybe shoot at different times of the day or bring certain items that will help you diffuse the light and. Um, or look for shadows and things of that nature. That way, you can kind of get the look that you're going for.、Mm. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think it's always good to not really. I don't think there's many portrait photographers that shoot midday、mm -hmm. without like any shadows or like a reflector or a,、mm -hmm. like a diffuser. But、um, yeah, but sometimes it's, it's a, sometimes it's a look, you know. But I, it's very specific. It is, yeah. <laughs> I mean,、uh, uh, I can't. I can't really argue with that. But, but、um, for instance, if I shot this, this is sometimes in the afternoon around sunset. But if、mm -hmm. I shot this during the day, first of all, the shadow won't be the same, but、mm -hmm. it will be harsher. So if I go ahead and do this,、mm -hmm. you can kind of see the shadows like darker.、Mm -hmm. But then, because of the light being strong, her. Skin's gonna be blown out, so the gap、yeah. between the shadows and her skin tone is gonna be so dramatic to the point that it's just it's hard to make it look aesthetic. It's、mm -hmm. hard to, yeah, it's just too harsh. Of、uh, the lighting's just too harsh, so it、mm -hmm. wouldn't work.、Um, yeah, so like shooting this photo only worked because of the time of the day, how the light is hitting.、Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think. That's the best I can do for explaining how light is. No, I think that makes sense. I mean, that's a good example. Like you said, like this photo probably wouldn't have worked as well if it was shot with harsh, harsh lighting. But、um, I know someone put it in the comment. Fairy said, you know, harsh light looks wonderful to me sometimes, and I agree. Like there are times where it's appropriate, and like,、mm. and it, it, if it's like a creative choice, it looks good.、Um, but if it's not the look that you're going for, then you want to understand light so that way you can get whatever it is that you're wanting to see in your photo. Yeah, I think that's、um, absolutely true, and it's just a creative choice. I feel like,、mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's、uh, it it's safer.、Is. It's safer than it's safer to shoot in the soft light. Yeah,、um, <laughs> less things that、sure. go wrong.、Um, yeah, so I think in terms of portraits, I usually don't do too much in Photoshop, but I come into Lightroom and even similar to before. Yesterday's live, I'll actually use a lot of these brush tools too.、Mm -hmm. So, 
kind of bring out the eyes and so I'll kind of just go up when up with exposure kind of make it sharp with the clarity and texture paint over her eyes and it gives that pop mm -hmm. and it's nothing crazy but um, as long as you don't go overboard it really adds a lot to the uh, eyes so that is what I usually do and then um, going pretty quick here I would add another mask the radial and then just kind of bring the brightness up and then it kind of focuses in the center which is great maybe turn down the put the highlights down a bit more and then I'll also use gradient you can yeah I'll use the gradient and just bring down the mm. exposure actually yeah maybe the shadows okay and then of course we do want to subtract this area and then we do the same for the top it's actually similar in terms what I do for portraits is similar to cityscapes and landscape yeah, just I'm focusing seeing, I'm seeing that with um the way you use the brush tool and um your gradients are very similar to how we were edging yesterday yeah I think it's it's just all the same like you just use the same but mm -hmm. technique but like you keep in mind that it's a different um like photo so mm -hmm. um yeah even just doing that kind of there's like it's a very minor edit I think it's a more neutral kind of edit where you, if you don't want like an overdone look you this would be perfect I think it's already aesthetic enough mm -hmm. with these colors um complementary co like the greens and the yellows so that was I, I did I really I usually spend a bit more time but um <laughs> <laughs> for instance um when you look at this photo right now you can also see that there's this blue yeah and you do want to get rid of stuff like that which is distracting so mm -hmm. in terms of this photo I believe there's no blue in any other aspect like any other part of the frame so you can mm -hmm. kind of just be lazy and do this no and then just mute it out yeah and then it's I mean that's way better than before so mm -hmm. We went from this to this, which is less distracting. Mm -hmm. um, you can use Photoshop and kind of, I think it's better if it's a bit, mm, maybe that's better. Yeah, yeah. There so go. yeah, um, simple things like that really help. I would also like go into depth and add brush tools instead of doing the um, linear gradient and then kind of darken the parts that are not these uh the flowers so mm. the further gap so her the side of the frame here with the sweater and like these gaps like just very subtle like subtle edits but it further like pulls the focus into mm -hmm. the just middle subtle, so yep exactly yeah um similar concept but that is how I pull focus and edit a photo I I know like if you get the photo from the get-go like pretty like decently or like how you want it to be um, will look like you can kind of just mess with the saturation luminance mm -hmm. edit a bit here and you go from like this to this and you're done pretty much um, so I think you don't always need to use a preset but it does help um yeah so that is how i'll go about editing like a sunset um portraits beautiful. yeah beautiful and then real quickly because i know you said earlier that you probably spent like uh five minutes taking these photos like what was the like were you guys just walking and you saw the flowers and you know saw the bush and area and you're like oh let's take photos there or <laughs> was it <laughs> was it like an intentional thing or was it just kind of like oh us you know 
just in light of the moment? Um, we actually were, we shot at a nearby location from here. It's within the Yoyogi Park, which is one of the biggest parks in Tokyo. But we shot the cherry blossom because it was in season. And then we walked out. We were like, the sun was going. It got dark there. So we left. And then my eyesight's not great. So I look over and it's like, it's like a tree with like yellow, yellow things. It looked like banana, like bananas. Mm. So I was like curious. <laughs> And I went close to it and I saw, I discovered it's like a flower. So it was like, this is pretty sick. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love, I love. Because sometimes you, I was just curious because sometimes you just, you get, you know, really beautiful portraits out of just curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you just have to try sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. If y'all have any questions uh, for Koki, please be sure to drop them in the chat. I do see it, that the conversation on lighting did continue. <laughs> um, but I do agree with Mary. Um, they have mentioned that it really just depends on the look that you're going for, when it, whether you use harsh or soft lighting. There might be certain situations where one might be better than the other, but I really think it's just kind of objective to whoever is shooting and, and what it is you're trying to get um but yes if yeah. you have any questions and uh, whether you're on youtube or behance be for be free excuse me to drop them in the chat so that way we can continue the conversation all right what do we have next okay so this is probably more interesting for everyone because it's going to be working with lights and a lot of elements um when i shoot and i actually don't know where to start but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so the whole episode was about editing a recent project. And so this is one of the recent projects that are not really a project. I don't know what a project is. It's not, it's like mm -hmm. a, something I really wanted to shoot. It, it's nothing, a project seems like a school, like, <laughs> like project. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to shoot a photo, a portrait that kind of re resembles like Tokyo with like the neons and somewhere no one's ever shot so mm. this i believe if someone's already shot here i'm sorry but i'm <laughs> pretty confident that no one's has it's in a building with a neons ne this neon at the back here and it's very famous so everyone shoots it from ground up mm -hmm. but then i would i really wanted this kind of top down shot that looks kind of feels like anime kind of vibe where it's like on a rooftop looking down with like the neons close by it does have like a hong kong look vibe as well but um yeah this is oh, the photos that i really was going for and as you can see even for portraits it's blue hour so mm -hmm. i do love my blues <laughs> and i think there was maybe four or five minutes that i could actually shoot like decent um before it got dark so this is like the these are these two are probably like earlier stages of blue hour and then, mm -hmm. and then um, later. These, these ones got darker so um that's that i had to work around it but i shot on the a1 and it has 20 fps burst shooting which is like crazy so i was burst shooting just so that i get oh, wow you know i don't have to bump up the iso mm -hmm. and the creative um, decision I made for these these sets of photo is these light leaks or light mm, mm. like streaks mm -hmm. and I get asked this a billion times and it's this right here I don't know if you can see it but it's called the star filter and there's maybe a dozen different styles but it's a filter where it has crosses mm -hmm. and it gives the light kind of streaks through um and a good example is even if you this if this doesn't make sense if we go here this right here yeah is what's yeah it, it creates like a light streak like this in any light source so i'm really like in love with this filter so i highly recommend it but that's how i got this look and for these, I'm not going to go into skin retouching. It's already pretty much done. I've had it uh, ready for the the editing. But um, yeah, uh, first things first, I will go about 
I'll go and uh, edit by adding the preset. It looks awful as you can see, <laughs> but we're gonna bump up the exposure. Um, we don't really need it. I do want to go for like a blown out look mm -hmm. anyways, and it is already blown out. So it doesn't matter too much. We kind of want to focus on the portrait and getting the uh, colors right. So yeah, a lot of work to do, but uh, we go and let's, there's so many ways to go about it, but let's go ahead and just bring the shadows up so it's not too dark in the shadows. Maybe we can, yeah, the blacks too. And yeah, so it's a bit purple. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely go and fix that by adding a bit more green, the tint slide. And that looks, that already looks a bit so decent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so the blues here are just ridiculous. So Let's just tone it down a bit. Hmm. And I think that looks a bit better for now. And, and this, the preset already has this like minus five in the orange, mm -hmm. which I don't <clears throat> need as well as the luminance. So I'll put that back. So as you can see, that was like yeah. a bit too much. Um, but I do like a bit of the minutes, uh, the glow, the, I think it's nice with the hair here. Mm -hmm. So um, we can kind of tweak the yellows too. Um, yeah, I think that looks good for now. And let's, Let's crop the image because I feel like it's, yeah, it's not, it's not straight. And you can mm -hmm. kind of tell that by this like yeah. building up here, but yeah. yeah, that looks much better. Uh, <laughs> and for a portrait, this, this is pretty dark. Like it's not something I, I'm a fan of like, so we can kind of just go here and uh, create a, mask Let's bring it up a bit and then of course hmm. let's see i think we can kind of put this slider um so this is the split toning tool which adds colors to the highlights mm -hmm. and sh uh, shadows and i usually love adding blues that's pretty aggressive but like the blues, but there's a, it's shot in the blue hour, so we kind of don't necessarily need it as much. What we can also do is if we we can play around with like the shadows and highlights and give it a totally different look. If we go into the greens, like so, it looks way different. So that could work too, but yeah, we'll leave it at zero for now. And then because it is warmer now, I do want to kind of try and fix it. Um, but I think we'll leave it here for now. Um, I would, I think this, because of the lighting, her skin tone's not ideal. But we can just quickly go here. And hmm, I'm just deciding how, which direction I should take it. But mm -hmm. We can even use a mask tool as well. So a simple edit with like adding saturation. Yeah. And just making a bit. If you do it too much, I think it's not great because the there's no the skin tone wasn't like as you can see, it's not yeah. that like I don't know explain it, but like if you compare it with this, like this has the colors already there which you Whereas can play around were, with yeah where where they weren't really like there in that image before They're yeah so creating it yeah but for this one not so much but um yeah maybe just bump up the saturation for the saturation for the orange that kind of helps 
Mm -hmm. um, but this part isn't really, um, it's oversaturated now. So we are going to fix that. And we also want to um, kind of emphasize this light as well while we do that. So we can just create another mask like this. If you kind of want to blow it out a bit, make it more dreamy, you can kind of use the dehaze tool um, and kind of really bring that light um, even further yeah. to life. So that is good. And then if you don't necessarily uh, like love the saturation of the orange here, you can kind of mask it and tone it down. So even like with that mask, you can kind of fix mm. it. But I don't necessarily think, I think it's more of the reds for me. So I could you know, just fix the reds instead of the oranges. And we can do that by adding a mask. So go like that. Actually, that's, that's going to kill the uh, oranges, my bad. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. So you're just kind of targeting the specific, the the red light streaks and just bringing down the saturation. Yeah. Of them individually. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that looks a bit better. But I also do want to kind of uh, hold on. add more glow to the overall like light back here. You can do that just by like adding masks and um i think for this we do want to get rid of this blue it's mm. it's a bit distracting and the color down here is a bit distracting so we can do this later in photoshop but then for now we can just quickly add these masks here to bring the focus into the middle for now And while we do that, we do have a few questions that have popped into the chat. So let me see. We have one question from Andy that says, Hey, Koki, will you edit sa the same photo multiple times? Um, that's actually a great question. Um, I usually don't, but sometimes when I'm um, feeling creative or inspired, I would edit uh, the same photos, different, uh, different ways and kind of mm. see if anything else looks better, but I already know in terms of like my edits, I know what would, what I enjoy, like what I mm. like actually. So like, I'll just keep it consistent, but, mm. um, yeah, usually just multiple times, but be trying to perfect the edit yeah. that I want to achieve if that's, yeah, that's the right answer i think yeah no, i feel that <laughs> i feel that and then the next question is um who is your favorite photographers or who are your favorite photographers oh um, that's a tricky question um <laughs> i don't know i feel like it always changes yeah for me um it always changes but uh i remember when i first started i think I was following like the Australian guys like Demos, Rosley, uh, Ichban, aka Ben, and like who else? Uh, Ivan Wan from uh, mm. US. I think he's in New York. He's based in New York. But yeah, I follow those people. So, but I, it just keeps changing. I feel like you grow and you kind of like your vision kind of changes mm. too. And yeah, so it always changes. But those, those people are the ones that I used to uh, flow. Uh, I follow from the uh, when I first started. Yeah. 
I feel that. I feel that. But yeah, I agree. Kind of mine, mine always changes. I really don't think I can answer who my favorite photographer <laughs> is right now off head because there's probably too many and the list is just all over the place. So, no. <laughs> um, and another question is, Ooh, do you ever use Vaseline or lotion on a UV on a UV filter for some effects in your photo? UV filter? Mm -hmm. Is that the one that, you, is that the one that's like, like the protector? I filter. think so. I think that's the protector. And then I don't, I guess like, and you add Vaseline lotion to see if it does anything. Oh, okay. So it's a trend now where people have Vas Vaseline and then mm -hmm. it glows, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do that because I have a black mist filter and the star, star filter. filter. Okay. Gotcha. It's, gotcha. That's yeah, true. The, I yeah. feel like those hacks are usually utilized um, more so when people don't have, you know, a star filter or certain filters that will get them that look yeah and i know it's pricey i think a start this start filter cost me like 175 us and i had to like back order it mm -hmm. and like so it might be cheaper to just if you don't have a star filter <laughs> it just might not, be quick i know <laughs> it's not the same you never know i used to i've done that before where i've added like um where i didn't have even going back even not even having a filter at all, I would use like, um, you know, like the plastic, it's not foil, but like the plastic um, saran wrap. Yeah, yeah. I would use that and I would put like lotion or more so Vaseline on it. And I would just like put it around my lens. <laughs> really work. And then it, it would give me like a hasty. Yeah, this is, wow. the, the, you know, sometimes you got to make do with what you have. So. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't go that far. Like I wouldn't think that far. Yeah, I, I did. You know, this, <laughs> this is back to like Ferry said. I'm a college student, so no cash. I felt that like I was when I had no money for anything. You get really creative. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, when you're a student too, I feel like it's absolutely. Helps. But I yeah. think that um, um, Ferry, if you're wanting to get that look, I do think if you get like if you have a UV filter, you could use like Vaseline um to get that same kind of hazy effect um mm -hmm. another question y'all are killing it in the chat um how do you price um your job in the beginning and how was the journey oh wow that's a big one i get asked this so many times um first of all i'm gonna lay it out there i never talk about um anything money related to anyone but and for the sake of education i feel like I sometimes do like, but um, yeah, like when I first started, I didn't plan to start photography as a freelancer. Like I came back mm -hmm. from the University of Sydney, flew back to Tokyo. I was like, I'm going to, I want to work at Apple as a retailer because I really love their product and I believe in what they do. Um, this, is it okay to say this? I don't know. They have like, I'll say it. They have a bunch of uh, interviews. Mm. so many way more than you can imagine with like normal jobs and then I failed on the last one mm -hmm. so I didn't make it but then I got an email that day that night from the North Face and they were like we need a um, photographer and mm. also as the photographer like because I was doing urban exploration and that is their new line mm -hmm. and they wanted a photographer that also kind of can like be the look for their new uh, oh. line so that was the first job and then from there I, I was like okay I can probably do this mm -hmm. and then I kept going but then it's not every day you get jobs like that so I used to do photos photo service for tourists so when tourists comes to Tokyo they mm -hmm. always want photos yeah. no matter if it's family um, their loved ones like any any like occasion like even by themselves they sometimes ask me and then I used to do a full day which is like usually depending on the people but five to eight hours for five hundred dollars mm. and that I've done for two maybe three years but by the end of by that time I raised my rates to like one thousand mm -hmm. and then made it so it's six, six hours a day mm -hmm. so that is how i s kind of started started i guess paid for everything and 
um, yeah, just hustling every day, uh, yeah. posting photos every single day at 8 p.m. for two years straight. Done that, and then I guess it just happened. Um, but it's also important to know that there's no way I would have been like where I am if I was if it weren't for all my friends. So yeah. connection is really important. So while you do that, you want to make a lot of connections. Yeah, no, I agree. Connection and community is really important. When I started, I started in college. And to be honest, the reason why I started is because I was making $8.50 with my little campus job, <laughs> working probably like 10 hours a week. Oh, no. You know, 10 to 12. <laughs> so barely, I would get like a check with a hundred, you know, every week you're getting $100 and then you got taxes and then you got all these other things. So I was making no money and I like to live a, not a lavish lifestyle, but I like to take care of myself. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you can, yeah. If you course. can. And so I was like, I need a way um, to make some extra money. And I remember seeing, I think I just, I had a friend who was older than me that wanted to take, you know, get her senior pictures done. And I was like, oh, people do grad photos on campus and they make money for it. So I went into <laughs> photography originally for the wrong reasons. I was just trying uh, to make up some extra cash, but then in doing it, found my love for photography. And I think a lot of it is when you look at your journey of like, especially with pricing, I think in the beginning, I was just trying to get as much work as I could. So my prices were horrific. I mean, I was doing things for like, you know, $50, mm. $100. And it was like a lot of extensive editing, sense of our time. Um, but I think everyone kind of goes through that time where you probably weren't charging that much, but you were getting experience, you were getting the photos, you were hustling a little bit. And then when you have, when you know more, you can do better. So, mm. um, I think that's, that's kind of like what my journey kind of looked like was, you know, I was very beginning, it was really rough, but you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the opportunities that I went after and just trying new things having my friends and community that would encourage me, talking to them too, because sometimes if you don't know something, maybe somebody else that you have in your community that's also a photographer, they can educate you on. So I think it's really important to have that community too, so. Yeah, I think that's super important. Um, even, I think even with anything, right? Like even sports, mm -hmm. just have people that elevate you. Exactly. Elevate you <laughs> to that next level. All right, I think yeah. that's all of our questions so far. Oh, no, right. one more question before oh, okay. we continue. I don't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to miss these ones from earlier. Um, so somebody asked, um, you use the star, wait, you use star filter with diffusion. What is the shop of the star filter? Thanks. What the, uh, where is it from? Yeah. Where is it from? Yeah. Where did you oh. purchase the shop for the star filter? So the star filter is called, is from Tiffin. So in my humble opinion, I think they are more on the pricier side, but more accurate. So mm. what I, for me, when I first started, I made a mistake of cheaping out on filters and they have usually a weird tint sometimes, especially for BND filters. Mm -hmm. um, so I always go for the best ones and it's the 82 millimeter. I always use all 82 and then use step up rings. So I don't have to buy multiple ones. Mm. And this is called the digital HT star 4PT 2 millimeter. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. <Perfect. laughs> Probably like one of the best things you can buy for your lens. Beautiful. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Koki, for that. And if y'all have <laughs> any other questions, drop them in the chat. The chat is bumping. I'd love to see it. So if you have questions on YouTube or Behance, drop them and we'll ask them throughout the rest of our stream. All right. So now Amazing. we can go back yeah. to what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, just back to where we are. We want to focus here. So I'm just quickly like making this brush tool and like either re like put it, pulling down the exposure. So this isn't as like, as like, it was a bit red before. Um, yeah, it was super red. So we're mm -hmm. trying to get rid of that. And then if we go up here and do the same for this, because we want to more, it is nighttime and we want to emphasize mm -hmm. neon. So we do want to darken it more and just pull the focus into the center. And yeah, I think we can easily do that by just brushing it. 
and as simple as I I went more into detail when I first when I edited it, but like it just to show you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm just doing it really quick. But then when you do when you do this, it also like changes the saturation luminance of the colors um, apparent in this part of the frame. So it is more blue than. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. I need to. This is how I do it. Yeah. So this is mm. more like a lighter blue. And then just because we darkened it, it changes. So you got to kind of remember that. And if you don't like it, you can also edit within that mask and just kind of tweak the saturation like that. And then you can, that's dramatic, but as you can see, it goes, it's less mm -hmm. blue. Or like, if you want to bring the blues up, you can do that. And that's the quickest way. Yeah. Um, but I think I like that. So yeah, right, we'll too, leave it too. at that. Um, yeah, it's a, so far we went from here to here. I would probably get rid of this and, and everything, but uh, I think we can even, when I'm feeling a bit like lazy, I do tend to just do these in Lightroom because it's sometimes like not that difficult, but let's see if it works. Are you just using a brush to try to bring down the saturation yeah. of all that blue? Yeah. So if, <laughs> all right, very lazy, but that, that is one way to do it, but okay, let's do it the proper way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I can show how um, you can actually edit separately like this like the uh, wait hold on I think I've made a mistake here uh, I did it bring in the original image and not yeah I think I just brought the original there we there go, we go. So yeah, um, these sets, I haven't uploaded yet, but I'll upload it on Instagram very soon. So if you, any of you want to actually see the photos, like photo photos on Instagram and observe them, um, you'll be able to in, uh, in a bit. But yeah, uh, duplicate the photo. And then I think this, we can actually edit let's see okay let's just fix this blue and to do so i usually the easiest way or the only way i know is to kind of go here and subtract this area of wherever okay we gotta unhide mm -hmm. um, this bottom layer but say we just don't want that blue and then go to zero so the top frame here is this image what you're looking at but then this part of the photo is just subtracted mm -hmm. i can do a better job but like just by the sake of explaining this um this is what it looks like uh, <laughs> but yeah so that means that this bottom layer which has the blue still here in frame um we can kind of edit without affecting this photo here mm -hmm. so if there's a lot of blue going on up here and this blues like blue overcast all over even here in the middle like um handrail so we do want to only edit this part so that's how you usually edit that area and then we go here with uh, selective color and we click this so it's only applying to this image right here which you see with the blue and then we want to change the blue so usually it's either the cyan or blue mm -hmm. that you want to change you can actually change the color as you can see you can really tweak the colors like that so 
I actually don't mind a bit of blue there. Like, I don't want to kill it Take too out completely. Um, <clears throat> and out of curiosity, too, what was this? What were you? Where were you standing when you took this photo? Are you inside <laughs> so, of this? If it, I'm not sure if it's an, a building, apartment, or something, and shooting out the window while she's over there on the um, ledge. Yeah, it's a weird location. I guess I didn't think about that. But, um, I was wondering. I was like, what, is, what was this location? <laughs> so urban exploration is my passion. It's my reason I'm mm -hmm. here. So I used to do a lot of rooftopping, and I like exploring um, places. And so this spot is a building, and then next to it, there's another building. So... I kind of hopped over to the next building because the mm -hmm. composition was good. And then I shot from that building. But then you say next building, but it's literally like like right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like one step like out. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, it just it made sense because the neons are here. And if I was shooting from this angle, I wouldn't get the neons behind her, which mm -hmm. wouldn't create this glow um like the backlit kind of vibe that i really was going for so yeah that's how i shot it <laughs> all right dope dope i was just curious i was like oh i wonder how you shot these i mean if you were there you you would do the same i feel like for sure <laughs> like, <laughs> if you saw the um environment but um yeah um, as you can see we really just killed that blue like that and it's less distracting this looks more like the window here and here mm -hmm. just like you can you can really mute it if you want but that's how i usually go about editing specific areas you can do that with this area as well if you don't like this red or just this part as well but actually don't mind it um but yeah uh that is how you can edit specific areas of the frame or mm -hmm. colors so yeah let's go ahead and save this and back into light when we go <clears throat> yeah i think it's a very straightforward um process for my kind of portraits um that i do <laughs> but yeah that is pretty much it and then i would really like Kind of darken this area even more but mm, yeah <clears throat> helps to bring your focus back to the main subject yeah um i guess that looks good and then there's not much greens okay uh i think in general like that was that's pretty much how I go about editing this one. But this is probably my favorite photo just because of the glow. Mm -hmm. But I do want to edit like an actual portrait portrait. So we could edit one of these, but mm -hmm. I do want to go ahead and edit this one because it's more like it's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. And I can also show different kind of like um, how I can color grade it differently to make mm -hmm. it dif look different even though it's like the same kind of image. So again, after, I think this photo, it looks a bit, it doesn't usually look this low of a contrast, but because of the filter, I think it gives that, um, not a log file, but it just looks more the mm -hmm. contrast or like low contrast. Um, yeah it's really nice because of the the star filter effect and okay let's it looks very awful right now but i'm gonna quickly fix this i think we can go down with the exposure how long did it take you to make your presets i think it's a it was a struggle because i i think it was when i finally kind of discovered how I would like my photos to look like. Mm -hmm. um, I finally found a. I, I don't know. I feel like I don't. I just one day I was like, oh, like this, 
this looks good like mm -hmm. but it's a base so it's kind of like adding it's like a starting point so it's yeah. not something you can you should like overthink about mm -hmm. because there's no one preset you can make that can work for everything every single photo yep so I wouldn't use this preset right here actually for this photo. I used a different one, which is not in this. Yeah, which I don't have, but it's the portrait um, preset pack. I didn't install it here for some reason, but yeah, actually let's not use it because I actually didn't use this um, preset. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just quickly get this to look more contrasty and decent so that looks good I always go down with the clarity again because I like that softer look and then bring um, clarity back in specific areas of the frame especially like the eyes lips sometimes the hair because mm -hmm. if the light's hitting it gives that pop um, yeah I think that looks good and then we go down here and just tweak a bit of the colors in general. I think the blues again here could go darker. I might mute it a bit more. And yeah, I think that looks good already. And maybe I don't like the yellows here, so mm -hmm. I'm going to bring it down. I feel like the more colors you introduce in a frame, the harder it's going to get for you to make it look um aesthetically pleasing so i do kind of want to limit myself to less colors like blues mm -hmm. and orange or like blues and greens um maybe three colors at the most and yeah that looks i think i'm really happy with this and then going really quickly i can use the mask i can usually use any whichever mask I want, but of course you want to darken the places that are dark in the shadows mm -hmm. and just pull focus. I do really like how the fate, the light is really kind of like creating a spotlight on her face. It brings you like a lot of your attention straight to her <laughs> eyes, which is really nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's, I, I don't think you can, it takes time for, I, I think it takes a long time for you to realize what's good and what's not good. Mm -hmm. um, and like to kind of see it before you shoot it, because if you don't see the environment and envision it, you won't be able to like attempt even attempt that photo mm -hmm. so it's just i feel like it took me so long for me to like actually get that skill maybe like three four years even um even now i'm like struggling because it's you never know it's sometimes like weird locations look good yeah um yeah maybe turn the luminance for orange and that's already looking good and I usually just add clarity into the eyes and stuff so it's more crisp because mm -hmm. we did subtract the clarity overall in the frame and we have another question oh this one is um, somebody asked, does Koki parkour? I feel like it's an essential skill for urban exploration. Uh, I mean, I never done, I can backflip in a trampoline and that, that's about <laughs> it. Um, I skate though. I love skateboarding. Um, I just split my, my shins the other day, uh... but, um, I still love it. I think it's. I, I mean, if you do any kind of sports and mm -hmm. if you have agility, it's usually like, okay, you're not really jumping from, it's not like a movie where you're jumping from building to building. Mm -hmm. um, if it's like that, if it's like stunt man kind of stuff, <laughs> it's going to require some acrobatic skills, but 
Um, yeah, uh, do you want to kind of for this photo? I did. I think this was the very few photos that I actually attempted something different and mm -hmm. I added greens um, like that into the shadows and orange into the highlights. And I think I'm not sure if it's like very apparent within the photo, but Hmm. What made you want to go and try to do something differently with this photo in general instead of going with your usual blues? Um, it was just kind of getting tiring to see the same <laughs> stuff over and over. Like, <laughs> um, like this photo here is so simple. Like I didn't do too much, mm -hmm. but then. It's always like this when I shoot during the like the daytime, sunset and sunrise. So mm -hmm. this time I was like, you know, it's like, I know it's not, I'm not pushing too much, but try and do something different um, mm -hmm. for the sake of, you know, being, getting out of comf like where you're comfortable with and trying new things. But yeah, I think green, adding greens is, might be something I want to try, uh, challenge myself. To do more it's just different um a lot of cinematic like movie films they added a yeah. lot of yeah greens and i think mm -hmm. i got inspired by that but um yeah i think i think in general it's like that will be maybe i can even like cool it down a bit mm -hmm. but i think in general that is how i go about editing this too but yeah it's super simple um going back to like these photos here i think let's see oh yeah i think it's always like for me i kind of have struggle edit uh photographing the location because I myself don't know when exactly would look better. So mm. it's like during the blue whole blue hour, I shot like so many photos, but then, but I can't like be like, okay, I need to shoot at this time yeah, in this composition and I'm good. Like that is like, that never happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's really so, restrictive yeah. too. I think it's, um, yeah, I think I, I don't know if I'm like not there. Like, I guess if you if you like really study it or like really get into it, maybe at some point in life you'll be like, "This is the shot. That's all mm -hmm. I need." Like mm -hmm. film photography. But um, yeah, that's yeah, the let's... reason why I I I really want to get into film photography. But that's kind of my fear with it is because I don't I'm not very. I give myself time and I had a lot of grace <laughs> when I'm shooting. So that way, if I make a mistake, it's okay. I could just, I took plenty of shots <laughs> and I got, you know, I didn't know what composition or I got different options so I can pick what I want. And with film, it's very like, you only have so many <laughs> shots. Uh, um, yeah, so. I, it's, it's also, yeah, it's very expensive too. It, that, that uh, part, it is very expensive, but it also is a good challenge to try to train your eye to you know know exactly what you need to get and when like how you want to get it because you only have so many frames and mm. then also it's so it's, it's so expensive so you won't, don't want to be wasting money on extra and extra rolls of film if you can avoid it so it's definitely yeah. a good challenge it's, for <laughs> it's a pressure you're just like trying to pressure yourself to do yeah better, kind of. <laughs> yeah i think because i started for uh, film two years ago oh, wow. and since then i I've actually felt like I actually think about, I step back and think. Mm. Whereas like I use Sony and I go on burst mode and I just shoot everything and every, like everything I can ever think of mm -hmm. in that moment. I don't step back and think. So, and I end up with like a hundred gigabytes of photo and it's just like all, maybe I get one really good one, but yeah, it's not accurate. So 
film photography does really help. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I think if I, right, these are like my, like for, for, from like my seven years of portrait photography, this is all like I'm happy with. Like, mm -hmm. So there's not much. Um, but as you can see, these are the photos that I already edited, but I'll just show you like the result. Oh, um, wow. I actually didn't fix this blue uh, for this one, but I might, I might do that. Um, yeah. Uh, but as you can see, it's like, yeah, those are beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so, so that photo you cropped in. This one I just cropped in, I think. Oh, uh, no, maybe it's a different, different I actually photo. don't remember at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think, yeah, I think I shot it differently. I'm not too sure, but yeah, surely the crop yeah. won't be that good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think her hand, her hand placement was um, It's different. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also do make a portrait episode on YouTube. Mm. And there, I think, it's actually one of the most uh, popular episodes because I take uh, you guys or the audience throughout the whole day and just bring you guys the, along the journey. Mm -hmm. And so if anyone wants to see my actual shooting process and like oh. all that, you can check that out. I think that I didn't is know you also... had a YouTube channel too. Wait, <laughs> hold on. We got to drop the link to that YouTube because... Uh, I mean... It's on my uh, Instagram bio, so but like ah uh, okay, perfect. So y'all yeah, know where you can find it. Head over to his Instagram, go to his bio, you'll be able to find his YouTube channel. Yeah, I think um, I think it's always like fun to. I don't really do like these kind of tutorial tutorials. Mm -hmm. I'm like really I'm awful at like, explaining. Mm -hmm. So I do enjoy the casual, more vlogging, and then like explaining a bit, but then showing showing the, the process actual, like, yeah i feel that i feel that uh, um, steve made a comment yeah. about film let's see what did he say even just shooting casual snaps or film sending the role to a developer out of 36 picks you might get four that were great yikes <laughs> and then they also said um the other downside was the time between taking a film pick and developing and printing could be days and you forget the steps you did unless you wrote everything down so it's definitely it's definitely a a, a, a unique <laughs> type of right. photography to get into but I do think I love film photography that's why I really really want to be more diligent about it and try because I do think it'll impact how I view how I shoot digitally just like you mentioned. So that is a goal I have for myself, but it's been a goal for like three years now. So I just haven't made much progress with it. <laughs> I feel like you're in a good, you should consider it right now because the yen is low. So if yes, you can get something from true. Japan, like eBay oh, or something. Oh, that is so true. Oh, thank you, Koki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and thank you, Sam, for dropping his YouTube in the chat. Look at that. <laughs> We are on top of the links here at Adobe Live. I'd love to see it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I think um, I was planning to just kind of go through these photos and edit. Um, I think that'll be great because I really love the final products of the entire set. So it'd be really nice to see if you approach these photos in the same way or what was different, especially for some of these that are you know, further, the different, yeah. yeah, further for sure. in the different lighting. Um, I think overall, because we shot during like maybe 15 minutes throughout the blue hour, the blue does change. So one thing to keep in mind mm -hmm. is consistency. If you're showcasing the photos as a whole like multiple photos it you definitely don't want like one to look like this and then mm -hmm. another to look like this mm -hmm. um and the one really like easy way to fix it is always like use this and like uh for instance if you have this done you can compare it with like the 
ones that aren't done and like check to make sure that you have the colors uh, accurately all throughout、mm. the photo.、Um, but yeah, I think it's we can go ahead and just start editing this one because it's a bit different. And I think we can add the preset,、um, bring up the highlights. And then the shadows as well. Exposure.、Uh, maybe this part's too blown out. So we can actually fix that、mm -hmm. a bit.、Uh, we're going to darken this area anyway. So this is not too important. But bring the dehaze back to zero.、Um, let's see. And kind of bring the contrast back down. And this will be the base to where how we will start the photo. So now we just look at the temperature and it's a bit too cool. We can actually fix it here too, but maybe just bring it to zero. And yeah, I think. Like, I don't even know like, which direction I should take the temperature to sometimes. So、mm -hmm. I usually just mess around. But I think we do want to emphasize the warmth from here.、Yeah. So I usually yeah, keep that in mind. So even though I do like a cooler tone, I'll go up with the temperature.、Mm -hmm. And I think there's not much tint or magenta, but. I think we can go a tad down. I think it's very minor, but、mm -hmm. it does help, I think, because we did change the temperature. And yeah, I think in terms of the balance of the photo, it looks, it, I'm really happy with. So now I think we can go ahead and just, let's see. I think if we do add these、uh, masks, we can actually go down here and use vignette as well、mm. a bit if you do want to go really like, if you're going to add it all around throughout the frame,、mm. you can just do that and just speed up the process a bit.、Um, and then the midpoint, you do want to drag it down so it's more、um, mellow in terms of the effect. And then that already is a bit darker. So from there, we can add a brush. And then just kind of go dark here. Maybe the shadows. And then we are going to paint this part. Usually, I have、um, music playing. <laughs> and, and it's <laughs> like so weird to not have that. To have, to have a little silence every now and then <laughs> with no, no, like, you know, nice little. What kind of music do you、um, edit to then? Oh, and, and with that, does your editing style? I don't know if it does because I know you have a very unique style, but does it ever like shift based off of what you're listening to? <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one.、Um, <laughs> I perform better with music for sure. And depending on the mood, I feel like if I don't want to listen to anything with lyrics, I always go for lo fi, just、mm. something calm, like chill. Mm -hmm. But then, if I'm really like trying to like hype myself up or like trying to stay awake because I want need to get the edit done, I'll like try and、um, put on. I like MGK, Machine Gun Kelly.、Mm -hmm. This thing is、okay. music since like, 2010. <laughs> Before he's he became rock. So yeah,、um, yeah. Like I, I'll put him on.、Um, just like try and get things、uh, done, get through.、Mm -hmm. 
the mm-hmm. editing. But um, yeah, I do need music for everything. Even if I'm doing any kind of sports, I perform better when I'm listening to music. Yeah, it's just, it's. I guess it's a it's similar to a lot of people. But yeah, do, I'm do the you same listen way. to music? Like, I do. I, yeah, yeah, I do. I have to like sitting oh, okay. in silence is kind of. It's <laughs> I. I have to have some kind of background no, background noise. So if it's not music, I might put something on like. You know, I might have my iPad, or if I'm in, if I'm editing in like the living room, then I turn on the TV just to have some noise in the background. Even if it's a show that I don't care to really watch and sit down and focus, if I just want to play it and hear people talking in the background, I like that. <laughs> but I more so like to just listen to music. I'll listen to like something that gets me like hype and energetic, so that I'm like editing, uh, and I'm feeling good. Yeah. If especially for those projects <laughs> that are like larger. Um, I, I need I need a little bit of a, a hype sesh. So whether that for me right now that's Beyonce and her her recent album oh, it okay. gives me the energy I need. But on on normal days, if I just kind of want to have something nice and soothe, it might be like um, jazz music or just in general, it might be Afrobeat beats that I'll play because it's just like I can sing, dance, and edit. But sometimes it can just distract me because I might be do, doing too much dancing. So you just mm. gotta find a nice balance. Like you want to enjoy, but not too much to where you're not getting your work done. So wait, do you dance? I like. Da- oh, like do you mean like, like dancing? Gen- oh, more like so. Like- so, <laughs> so the thing with uh, Afrobeats is that there's certain dances that we do, and so I don't have to be standing up, but I can like be doing tap my feet in certain ways that you know might mimic a dance or like my oh, hands. Okay. So sometimes if I'm enjoying the song too much, then I'll fi- catch, my- catch myself doing like a oh, yeah. move <laughs> and jamming out. And then it's like, wait, Idar, you're not editing. So <laughs> <laughs> I can relate too. I'm the same. <laughs> yeah. It but can't yeah. be too like good. It's going to be like. In yeah. The- yeah. A, nice, a nice in between. Good enough, but not too good where I'm, I'm jamming out. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think if you don't dance, it doesn't matter. I exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, um, awesome. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, just so y'all know, we're gonna get in close to um doing our artist spotlight. So kind of if you guys have anyone that you want to recommend for future spotlights, there is an artist spotlight button. So you can go ahead and recommend yourself, your friends, your favorite photographer. Um that way we can, you know, potentially see one, see who we're gonna highlight today and then See if we can get a future um, artist spotlight from your suggestions. So we'll okay. do that in maybe like eight-ish minutes or so. All right. Yeah. Um, I think I've covered a lot uh, that, that I wanted to. It's just, yeah, like masks and then subtracting the center. Maybe and... let's also do um, a recap. I don't think we've done one of those yet today. Um, oh yeah we have not so if anyone has joined and you're probably wondering um what's going on <laughs> i'm sure you've caught on by now but we'll go ahead and just give you all a quick recap of of the work that koki has done thus far okay um we kind of just started off with a basic uh uh portrait portrait it's like for me a 50 millimeter is like the definition of portraits mm-hmm. or something i'm comfortable with so this is a 50 mil shot during sunset and then we kind of used, uh, talked really briefly about how I do skin retouching, which is through Photoshop and using the patch tool instead of uh, the other uh, healing brushes and stuff. So we did that. And then this is the final photo. Uh, and then if I can bring this, it is very slow. Okay. So we did use yesterday's technique with a uh, brush tool and all the gradient filters and then darken these areas so it kind of separates from the darker areas and the brighter areas Mm -hmm. to kind of make it pop and then of course we uh edited um or like brighten the uh portrait portrait like the center area so it kind of brings out the subject and yeah we talked about how to kind of have less colors going on so less Mm -hmm. colors usually equals um less problems i feel like so yeah just tweak the greens and the yellows it was it was originally like very saturated so Mm -hmm. um yeah we did that and then 
We also talked about a filter called star filter. So this is my favorite and go-to filter for portraits because even if you don't shoot in harsh lighting where it's effective, such as this photo here, this light streak is all created from this uh, star filter, which is called um, the star, star 4F two millimeter by tiffin and yeah it's just a really unique look that not a lot of people yet use i feel like so it's a yeah I, i'm really like loving this but yeah regardless of if you don't use this during like a harsh lighting condition uh with portraits you see the light kind of mm -hmm. reflecting off of the subject's eyes and it creates this star and if you zoom out all the way it's not very apparent but it is in the details it's yeah. really nice um so yeah we talked about the filter and then we went into editing this photo so this was using the star filter again like this backlit neon sign kind of shooting um backlit so we kind of like took this lighting to our advantage while it was mm -hmm. blue hour but not too dark so this was like at the end of blue hour it was getting harder to shoot and of mm -hmm. course this was pitch black but mm -hmm. we still get like nice silhouettes but um, in terms of portraits it's nice to be in the location early get the earlier blue hour shoot throughout and yeah that's what we talked about having the uh shooting portraits in blue hour and i think that is pretty much it we did use again the same um gradient technique to kind of darken the parts that aren't so uh, important and mm -hmm. yeah pulling the focus in the center now you do a lot of work um from what we've covered the past two days obviously we're you know, the portraits, landscapes, cityscapes, et cetera. Um, and I know you mentioned that you like you like having that variety, but is there something that you feel like you're more drawn to out of all your work? Do you prefer portraits? Do you prefer the cityscapes or landscapes, photos? Uh, it's, it's really, um, that's a very difficult question because yeah. cityscapes and landscapes allow me to travel. Mm. And I love traveling. Mm. Um, not just because of the beautiful destinations, but because you, you get to travel with friends or meet new people. But then portraits are also like super fun because I can shoot in my city. And mm -hmm. if you're working with someone that you really like get along with, you have so much fun. And I realize not all models have like a creative um, vision, but when you find people that do have that creative vision where it's like, for instance, um, when, we, when I was shooting uh, the portrait episode, the newest, uh, the newest one, mm -hmm. um, this is one of the photos that I shot, but she was like playing around with like lights and we were like trying to figure out a different, like a newer, how to step up the photo mm -hmm. even to, like more. And then that made me realize that, oh wait, I had this red, uh, red uh, le oh. leveler which then I was like, okay, we got to use that. And then, yeah, it just happened to be one of my favorite photos now. So uh, portraits. So yeah, things like that. Even for this, um, the door was locked or the, there was like a staff in the front of the mm -hmm. building. And then she was like, yeah, we got to try this side building. I was like, okay, wait, if we can actually make that, like we can actually like try that like route. And then mm -hmm. we ended up like, being up here getting the shot we wanted so yeah oh, things like that it's very fun um oh, working wow, with people so which one did you to... start with first because i know we talked about your journey earlier but can you remind us which one did you start shooting landscape first or was it portrait first uh, i was uh land... it was street photography and mm. cityscapes okay um portraits oh. i only started I don't know, 20, like one or two years later down uh, the line. Okay. But yeah. Oh, that's I don't, I, I didn't have any like 
proper like model people so <laughs> I shot my friends and then like work my way out mm -hmm. no I love that because yeah. I, I did the same thing and even today whenever I um a lot of my portfolio currently like if you go and look at people are like oh like who is this model I'm like oh that's just my one of my girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> you know sometimes it's just cool to shoot with your friends so you have fun when you um can do that and like it's a good like just like friend bonding thing and there's no pressure because they're they're just happy to shoot with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you get good. i mean they gotta be comfortable a lot of my yes. friends are comfortable so yeah that's yeah. true that's a big part. you're lucky though yeah. no i have a lot of yeah. friends that are oh. they're like oh i'm ready i like you darn you need a you need a model you need a model <laughs> so <laughs> Awesome, y'all. So we are at the top of the hour, and I think this is a good spot for us to do our artist spotlight. So as y'all know, every time we do our live streams on the second day, we love to highlight a specific artist. And so I'm interested to see who we have today. So um, Koki, can you go ahead and pull up our artist spotlight and we can kind of spend some time looking at their work, discussing and just talking about who they are? Yeah, um... It's really cool to be able to introduce my friend Demis Rosley uh, to you guys. He's from Sydney, Australia, as you can see right here. He's a photographer slash designer, but he is an architecture student. As you can oh, see, he loves, he's yep. very, very like technical to when it comes to photography, which I really respect and learn from. So when I have my lines like crooked, I'm like stressing out and I, I feel like <laughs> I've learned that from him and which is good but yeah he does let me like he does like landscapes cityscapes does like quite a bit of um structural like architecture stuff because he is from that background mm -hmm. and I followed him when I first started photography in Australia when he was maybe like 15k followers and he was only uploading architecture stuff and mm -hmm crazy to see how long like how far uh, can we both you click became. on that photo with the basketball court in the water oh yeah this huh? just so i think this is for a, yeah like a and like the partnership, the partnership. But, yeah huh <laughs> this oh, makes more amazing. sense okay yeah that makes more sense yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> Because the first one I said, wait. <laughs> like, how do you get there? How, how did this happen? Is this like this really good Photoshop or? <laughs> I mean, he, you can see him stand there. But yeah. yeah um, oh, love. I do want to, like, the, the reason why I chose uh, Demis to present is because I really felt like we collaborate well. For mm. instance, like, I think this is the one. But this is like a location in Kyoto district, uh, Kyoto uh, down south, and um, we shot this spot together. But I was like, "This this photo is being shot um, so many times; mm -hmm. it's already done." And then, so I was like, "I do want to actually shoot this at night because I've never seen it, and mm -hmm. it would be so cool if we can ask those people to turn the lights on." Uh -huh. Um, and have the lights uh flashing then so this is the photo but um i didn't know how to do it the they were closed and then we didn't i didn't know how to achieve this mm -hmm. but then demos was like i can show you how you can create that in photoshop oh and so that was done in photoshop yeah like this was done in photoshop and like he taught me how to do this and since we had a stick light, we put the uh, stick light in the mouth. So it's like, we didn't have to do all this in Photoshop, but mm -hmm. the eyes is all uh, Photoshop. And I learned a lot as well as like, we both contributed so much because without like him, mm -hmm. I, this photo wouldn't exist. So yeah, it's really cool to have a friend like him where, you know, you can be both like, super creative and try and like figure out a way to bring something to life something mm -hmm. new but yeah he does a lot of crazy photoshop oh stuff gosh, this is absolutely incredible can you go actually go back up there was one photo that i really seemed so unreal at the very very beginning of his page of his instagram 
Where is it? It's top here. The one with the balloons. This is, so the second in the middle. This one. Oh, this is how he does it. Yeah, he shows. Oh, wow. So he just then, flips it. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. And changes the uh, the color, the hue. That's dope. And yeah. then how did he do the next one? The second, the second row middle photo. This one. Yeah, that is. Oh, this is um actually this is the uh. Oh, is this like a summit? Is... Okay. Oh, actually, wait, no, I know where this is. Is this in New York? Yeah. Okay, I know where this is. When I I visited New York for the first time, I did go to the summit, and oh. um, it's really dope. But I was like, whoa, I wonder where this is at, and nah. He's incredible. The balloon? Yeah. There's not this many. There's not this many. Exactly. That's no. why I was like, huh, <laughs> is this the summit? Because there's definitely not that many balloons in that place. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no way they can. I nope. mean, you can see it from the reflection here a bit. Mm -hmm. There's no way that. It's, no. Yeah. The joys of Photoshop. Love it. Like his website, he sells prints too. And you can see, um, yeah, this is like the split of like the golden gate mm -hmm. bridge he does like this crazy dubai and out of space like fantasy kind of uh photos these plane series where he photoshops he actually shoots the act like the planes too but then he photoshops these different locations that he's visited wow. so it's not like he just downloads some stock image and just mm -hmm. makes something out of it he actually shoots it which is like really cool i think so yeah that's that's his style um yeah i think that's that's about it uh, I think. that's dope that's dope so make sure you guys go ahead and give is it, how do you pronounce his name demos demos give him a yeah. follow on instagram go ahead and check out his website and then also bring a photo to look at his prints too those are incredible i might need a print in my home so <laughs> make sure y'all go ahead and check out his prints as well and if you have um somebody that you want to recommend for a future artist spotlight like i said before there is a nice little button right above the chat box that says artist spotlight where you can click on it and recommend an artist to for us you know to spotlight and check out awesome so we still have about, I'm bad with time, but maybe like 15-ish minutes left in our line. Oh, 15, 20-ish minutes left. So is there anything that you want to kind of finish out with, Koki, for the remainder of the live? Uh, I did kind of cover quite a, uh, everything. Quite a um, bit, yeah. I we didn't really finish the edits for these series, but... Maybe let's do that. Um, yeah, I think even if I don't finish these... Uh, I think it's okay because um, it's going to be uploaded soon. Mm -hmm. um, it, I haven't published it yet, so I'm super excited to see how it'll do. But um, yeah, uh, like this photo, we just really, going back to it, masks, uh, used a lot of these masks around it. So it's like we didn't have that before. This corner, as well as these bottoms. And then... It's my editing. I think for me, I really enjoy editing portraits that aren't just portraits. It's more like mm -hmm. an environmental portrait. Yeah. Um, yeah, just brighten the face a bit. Yeah, it just, it's more fun uh, just because it it has like best, uh, best of both worlds, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do you enjoy like shooting more like a tighter portrait portrait headshot yeah like... i like so there are times i think in general a lot of my work is kind of probably split between the two to be honest i do really love a good portrait like close up mm -hmm. in your face like get capturing your the detail of like your features etc i have a really big obsession with people <laughs> and um i really think like our faces tell like they kind of like tell a story of like who yeah. we are and like certain features that we have so i do really like to highlight that in my work um but then i also do agree that sometimes like portraits are great and they're cool but i also really love when i'm able to take a subject and place them in a cool environment and see how i can kind of make them one with whatever that environment is so 
Um, I think if I had to pick, I can't. I don't know if I can pick which one I prefer. Really? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, so like <laughs> 50, I love 50. 50. I'll say 50 50 because I love portraits like, a lot. But then I also <laughs> love like finding a cool location and maybe if there's some um, like a really cool like building or architecture or something that I can bring into the photo and tie it in with my subject. Um, I think that's really, really dope and creates more of a unique situation opposed to just bam mm. somebody's face <laughs> yeah it's, it's it does limit you a bit but yeah i feel like i actually have a question um this is for me it's like kind of luck mm -hmm. and i'm really not like great at shooting like super close up mm -hmm. like what would you like what's one tip that you would give to like create uh... like getting the right like getting it right like when it's like close up close up because yeah <laughs> I feel that I feel that so I would say what you were saying earlier about your lens is probably the most important thing for me so if I'm shooting a portrait um if I'm shooting like a really up close portrait I'm most likely going to shoot it with well actually to be honest I used to have a 50 that I used often and now I use a the Canon 28 to 70 because I oh, like okay. um, the depth, like, you know, I can shoot it. I never shoot at 28, but I can shoot <laughs> at all. I have the option. I can, it's one, one, one lens that's really, really universal. Mm. Um, but I usually just kind of picking the right focal point, um, which is usually around that 50 millimeters anyway. Um, and then the one thing is like placement of your subject is really important because if I'm, because it's so tight, I don't want like random things coming. Like if there's going to be other things in the frame, it needs to make sense. So that's why I really love the portrait that you pulled up that you, that you shot and edited because like it, she's framed really, really nicely to where like you have the flowers around her and you have the flowers casting the shadow on her face. And so it's more intentional opposed to mm -hmm. like, just like taking a portrait and you have this random leaf coming in or something you have to be just kind of intentional with what's also joining your subject in the photo um because you don't want it to add or subtract from you don't want it to distract excuse me from what your what your aim is so I really love this photo because I think that the, the flowers add to it that doesn't it doesn't distract but right, you're right, still yeah. but the subject is still <laughs> the focal point like I'm still drawn into her which is the point of a portrait to be drawn into the individual in the image. But I like that you added the, that you have the surrounding that's being brought in as well, but it's not taking away from who, like herself in the image. So. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, I hope it's that makes hard sense. though. <laughs> it, it does make sense, but then it's not like you can, this is just pure, pretty much pure luck. Yep, yeah. Across, like, <laughs> the light lighting and like the situation. Mm -hmm. but, and sometimes, like, yeah. I, and I also like symmetric, like just for things to be symmetric. So if I am placing my subject in like, um, like if I'm doing something similar to this, like this, sometimes I like to place them in like around plants or whatever. Um, I just want to make sure if they're come if something's coming in from this side, I don't want this empty gap here. I want it also to come from the other side as well. So uh, it creates okay. some kind of balance. So I think balance is also important too. Um, mm. I think that kind of is another key point to keep in mind. Yeah, it's so, so many things can go wrong when you shoot. Yeah. Like, kind of, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm kind of like terrified sometimes. So that, yeah. I feel that, especially because <laughs> it's like so many things can, one, like you said, can go wrong, but it's like, it's so limiting. Like you're literally yeah. taking a massive environment saying, like, yeah, I'm going to do away with all of that and just <laughs> <laughs> take I know it's a bit. <laughs> I think it's good when it's like part of the series or something, but mm -hmm. yeah, if it's just a standalone piece, you got to nail it. To yep. like, yeah, yeah, you definitely do, especially to make a, a portrait seem interesting and feel like it has, I feel like it's easier to shoot. In my case, sometimes I find like when you find a really cool environment, like sometimes those portraits are, look, those pictures look more cooler because, oh, there might be like a cool building or the location is dope or something. Mm. Whereas a portrait, sometimes it's just the, the subject is your main um your, yeah. your main thing so sometimes I don't want my portraits to come off boring too but you just you know you just play around that's why I say it's, it's split sometimes I love portraits sometimes I'm like more of a environment in my subject being caught in that environment type of gal so it just depends yeah <laughs> I think yeah that's true but no I love it I love the like going back to these photos how she's kind of like 
immersed within the environment and how like the environment is like I love the I really do love the that you focused on the light from the where is this light source coming from what 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 was what is it actually is it just like a large it's like, a massive yeah like a neon sign with like uh, yep you yeah it's that. just a massive neon sign it's it's everywhere like there's a lot in mm -hmm. um yeah Tokyo or uh Hong Kong even there used to be a lot in Hong Kong but yeah it's just like um it's very common and a lot of people like the Chinese alphabet like the kanji mm -hmm. and so that also does pretty well um yeah because I really yeah. like how the light the the neon lights are kind of spilling onto her um in this image mm. and so I just like how the environment and your subject are coming kind of becoming one so it's really nice yeah thank you of <laughs> I course think, of course I think it's <laughs> It's also like picking the right people that matches the scene yeah, too. Yeah, you know, that's really true. Um, like I have a close friend of mine that also kind of like models a bit too, mm -hmm. but she has like, um, like really vibrant like dyed hair, like pink or blue. Yeah. And I wouldn't shoot her here because mm -hmm. it's too much colors and too distracting. Mm -hmm. But whereas her, like she has a black hair, which is like natural colored, mm -hmm. and then it goes well with. Um, like the nature vibe and also the colors that are going on here so yeah I think it's important sure. to pick the uh, subject oh yeah picture. absolutely you're, you're picking the right subject so I like how you mentioned the hair then even like the same thing with clothing what she's wearing like if she was wearing like a bright sweater right. or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like something that was <laughs> it wouldn't work but the black is really nice and neutral for the environment so it's really mm. kind of important to think about all that um, and then somebody asked for the other pictures that you shot, the one with the, on the rooftop with the, um, yeah, this one the, with the neon lights. Um, I know we talked about the location earlier, but if we can talk about it again, somebody asked, is this on a rooftop in Tokyo? Yes, it's, uh, Shibuya district. So it's the famous, uh, scrambles crossing, the world's most busiest crossing. That's the same district. It's a bit on the end of it uh but then yeah if you're wandering around the area you can kind of come across stuff like this always and yeah i think it's super fun to i guess like try and figure out a new composition to shoot mm -hmm. and stuff so yeah it's uh it's in tokyo if you're ever here um it's like a neon paradise oh no awesome so maybe for the last few minutes do we want to Finished. are there any more images left in this set that you want to finish up um it's really sim like i think for this like we already yeah. pretty much finished um i can quickly show how like if we bring down the i wouldn't go use the vignetting this much but just pull the focus in the center like this and then we're done uh these photos here are going to be the similar um like i'll edit in a similar way Mm -hmm. so I don't think it's necessarily like that important to edit all of this and then you can you guys can everyone can see the photos once it's uploaded but yeah I think that's about it for this uh this series um I do also kind of start like I also do these kind of photos Ooh. where it's like I also believe that like if you're so my way of thinking is like if you only shoot portrait oriented you're only shooting for instagram yeah but oh, then wow. if you actually love shooting you also like consider shooting landscape when it's necessary so that's also important to keep in mind but then these this is from a quote from her the movie and i like adding mm. quotes and like i think it really is a fun way of using portraits mm -hmm. um to tell like more of a story and words are like a great way of doing so and um yeah i think just a split three it's always good to have like out of focus like just the vibe yeah um, going on uh, as well and here you can see these like particles or like flares oh, yeah, yeah. and these flares can be achieved when shooting but you know when you're on the field you're excited you have all these things to worry about and you're on the belt shooting 
you don't think about doing everything、um, in that moment. So、mm-hmm. I have these, I have these like PNG files that you can like lay over in Photoshop and then add it later、mm-hmm. to give a different、uh, look. So that's a bit of a cheat that you can do. <laughs> You can even find it on like Google, like like lens flare or like、uh, like crystal flare or something,、mm-hmm. and then try and download the PNG and lay it over on Photoshop. So that's one more、um, aspect to,、uh, that you can do to like kind of change up your or use more of what you've shot and、mm-hmm. um, make something different out of it. Yeah, I love how you use that photo that's out of focus. I think sometimes、yeah. we tend to like disregard <laughs> photos. Oh, that's out of focus. Like I'm not gonna use that. But I like how <laughs> you were able to pull that into this set and kind of make it like there's still a story behind you know those type of those, those images that even are caught by mistake. Was that intentional、mm. or was actually that it's just... intentional? That's what I was gonna ask. Was it、this、intentional? Too. <laughs> There、This、you go. This too is intentional. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I had DMs being like. I can't see her face, or like it's out of focus. I was like, okay, so, I, <laughs> it's either I suck, or I mean, it's just like it's a creative, creative choice. That, that it wasn't for everyone. <laughs> But yeah, like even this, it's like out of focus, and it's like landscape oriented.、Mm-hmm. Um, but this one's in focus. But like, yeah, it's a, it's just it's fun to kind of mess around, you know. Even yeah, it's not always about shooting it. One way, even like this photo is crooked. I crook like made it so on purpose, and like yeah, it's just yeah. I think it's a、uh, then you can do like these two split where it's like yeah, like, this is yeah, beautiful. Like, crooked in like the different like, and I even if even like you said you're like it even if like t- by technicality it is crooked. I feel like it add the perspective is so beautiful though, and so sometimes you just have <laughs> to play around and like yeah. Not everything has to be semi straight. Not everything has to be done a certain.、Way. You can be intentional、um, mm. and play around and see what you can kind of get and how it adds to the, the overall feel of your image. Yeah, I think、um, even up. It, I mean, I haven't done it here, but upside down that might work too.、Mm, yeah,、um, you just have to like kind of think beyond what even like everything that I've、uh, like taught in this like like live. You can do the opposite or like. You don't have to even follow any of it, and、mm-hmm. you can like create something that's as or even better.、Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's not necessarily all about trying to get it aligned, and you know, just sometimes you just gotta feel it and let your instinct take away. Yeah, take control. Yeah, but I do like how you said、um, that sometimes when we shoot portraits. It's we're keeping in mind like where it's gonna go. Like Instagram is usually where our images are gonna live, or on our websites too. But、um, mm. trying to shoot landscape and how you can get a different perspective. There was one real quickly. I know we're getting ready to close soon, but there was one other image in that set that I really am intrigued by.、Um, can you? It's is she on a? Is this a boat that she's on? The the kind of with the flowers at top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was.、Uh... Those、it was like, like on a、dreaming. boat, yeah.、Oh. <laughs> so, Those... this right here, the glow,、mm-hmm. is is from a black mist filter. Really? Yeah. So I think that glow is always like you've you've never used the black mist filter.、Or? I've not. I've not. No. Oh no! Really? <laughs> like, I haven't. I haven't. Oh、uh, no! If I was there, I would like like buy it for you. Like that's how much. <laughs> how much like. It's gonna change your life. All right, so I'm gonna make a quick note that after this live, I'm gonna go get myself one of those filters because <laughs> I love the look of it. Where was that? Where was the shot at? This was in Chidori Gafuchi, which is like a like near Tokyo, like the center of Tokyo, where it's、mm-hmm. like a、uh, like a river,、um, and then you can get on this boat for like like five. Five dollars, and yeah, it's like during the cherry blossom season. And one thing to know for the black mist filters, one other reason besides the blooming effect that is like, if you use it, you get a softer skin tone. So it it's really like easy to edit portraits.、Mm-hmm. So it's like a kind of like a cheat code or like a 
some a tool that will help you um, with your portraits too. So it's a uh, it's a good investment for sure. Oh no, I definitely need to make my way over because the amount of locations and looks that you have options, <laughs> like being over here in Arizona, I have the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I can do a lot with it, but I just. Thank you so much for everything that you've shown us thus far. It's just uh, like, thank you for having so, me. Yeah. of course, the beauty, beauty in locations, the work that you do and how you go about it. I love the, the point that you made about the landscape images and layering them on top of each other and kind of getting a specific vibe for that. So I think that was incredible. I enjoyed the live. I really hope <laughs> that you guys enjoyed it. Koki, you have been incredible these past two days. So thank you so much for your time thank and you make so sure, much. of course, of course. And as <laughs> always, like Sam, who was always on top of it, he's already dropped Koki's website and Instagram <laughs> for you. So make sure y'all go ahead and give him a follow on Instagram. Check out his website. Check out those presets, everything that we've talked about. If you missed the live from yesterday, of course, you can go ahead and catch it, give it a watch and recap on this live as well. And as always, make sure that you stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Claudie from Print My Soul, immediately, fo immediately followed by day two of a branding and identity live stream with Is Isabel Parier. So as always, y'all, it has been fun. It's been great. Until next time, thank you.